Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Schlav, the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today, my guest is Bruce Kim. Bruce is a Hawaii lawyer that I have known most of my life, from probably the seventh grade. We were good friends in high school, and we both returned to Hawaii to practice law after law school, and we continued our friendship. I recently learned a few things about Bruce that I had never known before. I read an article Bruce wrote earlier this year for the Korean Times about his personal journey across the sea to Korea while he was in the Peace Corps. I've asked Bruce to share the story of his voyage with us. Bruce, welcome. Good to see you. Aloha. How are you? Same here, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, I read this article. Uh, you wrote it uh, in uh, earlier this year, uh, and it was based on your service in the Peace Corps as a volunteer, and you went to Korea. Uh, I had never really known. I mean, all the times you and I have been together talking, and we, we never covered that. And, and so it occurred to me that you wanted to tell this story. And, that, and let, let me ask you, why did you write the article? Uh, so the article was generated uh, based on a contact between uh, an organization that I'm currently on the board of called the Friends of Korea that was started by uh, returned Korea volunteers, Peace Corps volunteers, as a way of fulfilling the third goal of the Peace Corps. So the Peace Corps has three basic goals. The third goal is to promote understanding of other people among Americans. And so the Peace Corps volunteers to fulfill that motion, uh, mission when they come back to America uh, are supposed to foster uh, you know, relationships and cultural understanding and personal understanding between Americans and people of other cultures that they perhaps served in while they were Peace Corps volunteers. And uh, so that was the purpose of Friends of Korea. So long story short, uh, Korean government has been very generous in the last 10, 12 years to recognize Peace Corps volunteers who served in Korea. Uh, just as they, they spend a lot of time recognizing Korean War veterans, they also uh, are very generous in supporting and recognizing Korean Peace Corps volunteers or Peace Corps volunteers who served in Korea. So um, as part of their outreach, they've actually sponsored, except for this COVID period, annual return meetings in Korea for Peace Corps volunteers who served in Korea. And an outtake uh, from that is the Korea Times became interested in all these stories because the volunteers served in very uh, diverse and interesting fields while they were serving in Korea uh, from 19, mid 60s through the early 80s. And um, they, so, they solicited the Friends of Korea to generate articles for them so that they could publish in the Korea Times, which is the largest English language paper in Korea. So uh, someone asked me to do the one that was supposed to be published in January, and that's how it came out about. Okay, and I, I kind of got a feeling when reading the article that you were searching a little bit or telling a little bit about your own family. And, 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 and before we get into your Peace Corps, tell us a little bit about your family. How, how did your, your Korean family get to Hawaii? And, and what was your... Korean background here in Hawaii. How, how did that work? Mm -hmm. um, so as I outlined in the article uh, briefly, uh, I'm third generation Korean American. My father was born here and uh, he was born of immigrant parents who came directly from Korea at the turn of the century back in uh, 19, between 1903 and 1910 when Korean immigration first opened up into America. And as you, as you know, at that time in Korea, it was a very turbulent period in their history. They were in the process of becoming colonized by the Japanese empire at that time. So a lot of Koreans exited and left Korea. Uh, wow. They went to various places. You might describe it as a diaspora. And um, one of the places they ended up with was to work on a plantation in Hawaii. Others went to Mexico. I don't think many of them went to the US mainland, but 
He went to South America, Mexico, Hawaii, other places like that. He went to China. Um, and a lot of them were motivated by returning to their homeland and one day re regaining Korean independence. And so they came to Hawaii, they worked in the plantation just as my grandmother did uh, with her family. And uh, eventually she ended up uh, marrying and having children, one of whom was my dad. Uh, and that was on a plantation in Makaweli, Kauai. Eventually, at some point in time, they were allowed to leave the plantation after they fulfilling their work contracts. And she moved to Honolulu with the, her kids. And um, briefly after that, my dad went to college here at, at UH. Um, he had two other brothers and a younger sister. And uh, after graduating from UH, he basically was just doing odd jobs. Uh, that was another sign of the times that he was raised in. And we, they were just coming out of the depression. Um, World War II broke out and he volunteered like many other people in Hawaii. Um, he ended up in the US Army Air Corps as a navigator bombardier and flew about 60 combat missions, mostly over Italy during the Italian campaign to liberate uh, Italy. Uh, he returned to the US basically getting ready to launch the campaign against Japan. They were forming bomber crews all over the place. One of them was being formed, I think, here in the state of Hawaii to go to Japan. And uh, the war ended. So he took the GI Bill and he went to the University of Iowa and obtained his LLM or LL or his JD degree. And after that, uh, our, the kids started. He got married, came home, got married. Um, and all the kids came and one of whom was me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you grew up here in Hawaii. And yes. uh, okay, what was that like? I mean, you had a Korean background. Did, was that ever shared with you? Did your family ever talk about it? Or, or was that? So that, that was, yeah, as I articulated in the article, I mentioned in the article, I mean, that was a missing piece for me. Um, they really didn't dwell on anything about the family history, where they had come from in Korea specifically. I think that was something they just wanted to leave in the rear view mirror and focus on the future and their family. Um, okay, so, so so that, but you 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 didn't want to do that, I I, I think. I, I I mean, is that what prompted you to go into the Peace Corps and to Korea? Is that is that the basis, or or just tell me when, when and why did you decide to do that? Yeah. So after I graduated from college in 72, I didn't have any really strong feelings about what I wanted to do right at that point in time. Um, I had always been interested in the Peace Corps, having grown up as you did when John Kennedy was president, when he asked everybody you know, to think not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. In fact, he proposed the, Peace, the formation of the Peace Corps in his first campaign, he, he arrived at the University of Michigan Student Union at something like two o'clock in the morning. He was greeted by 10 plus thousand students who waited all night to listen to him. And then during that address to those students at that time, he proposed the formation of, a, of an entity. It wasn't called a Peace Corps at that time, but some kind of international outreach um, organization where young Americans could volunteer and go to other countries and help provide help and assistance to them. So th that was, I think, part of the large part of the motivation to at least sign up for the Peace Corps. There's no guarantee you're gonna get in, but that was one of the options I had after graduating from school. I didn't wanna go right back to school again. Yeah, I imagine your dad might've said something about that, but uh, yeah. <laughs> how about, how about, you know, how, so how did you end up in Korea? I mean, what, I mean, so, uh, I, I think you aimed at that, right? I mean, uh, um, actually, what the, the 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 you know they ask you for what your preference is, and they give you certain areas throughout the world where the Peace Corps at that time was was um, functioning. So I asked to go to Africa uh, <laughs> in the summer, late summer of 27, 19, yeah, nineteen seventy two. I got a letter from the Peace Corps saying you need to go to this place, which was Denver. And you're being considered for Peace Corps Korea. So I thought that was ironic. <laughs> you know, I asked for Africa and I got Korea. And, 
and as I articulate in the article, you know, I have a lot of the, I had a lot of questions because by that time, after graduating from college, you know, you know, my family's background and where they came from and why they came and all those type of questions, you know, had not been answered, uh, although they had maintained close ties to the Korean community, and. Um, I wonder why, you know, you, you don't talk about this and it wasn't a big point of emphasis in any. Well, you, you know, it's kind of funny that, uh, I mean, how did these things happen? <laughs> you know, very strange. So, so you ended up going to Korea and, and where in Korea did you end up going? Where, 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 where did you go and what did you do? Okay, so at that time in the early seventies, Korea was doing, pretty much focusing on uh, middle school English programs. Um, they also had a, a health program, which is active in like TB, tuberculosis control programs. Uh, they had a university level program that was, I think, teaching English as well. Uh, there may have been other programs, but those are the three major ones. And um, so I was selected to go to the middle school training program. And where, that's where- so we trained at a town called Chuncheon, which is sort of northeast of Seoul. And at that time, uh, it was in the country. And yeah. it's a city, but uh, it was hard to get to from Seoul. It was a long bus ride uh, from Seoul. Um, and we trained there for about two and a half months. And then we were assigned to our, our uh, uh, towns and cities. And my, the town that they assigned me to is called Samcheon Po. Okay, uh, now this. You've, I'm, we're going to put up on the screen some photos of that, mm -hmm. uh, of the city that you, you took these photos, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let, let's go through them and tell us a little bit one, one at a time as we go through. Okay, them. great. Po. okay. Uh -huh. this, this particular scene is uh, rice fields, which were immediately adjacent to the little town of Samchampo. So Samchampo okay. is a fishing town, primarily. Yeah, yeah on the southern coast of Korea and on the outskirts of the town were largely agricultural pursuits like raising uh, rice, which is the largest one. So these okay, are a scene of rice paddies not too far outside of Samchampo, okay, looking next. towards the southern sea. And this next photo is a picture of the Samchampo Harbor, not a big harbor, but um, with the, at, at uh, low tide. And uh, this is with the water in the, in the harbor. <laughs> And uh, it's a picture of a fishing boat that was in the harbor at that time, taken from the breakwater which surrounded this. The pretty, pretty, city, pretty area. little, beautiful, kind of neat, neat area. Yeah. And then the next photo, what is? Uh, okay, so this is the school is in the background that I, I taught at. It was a boys' uh, high school and middle school for the town, and these are rice fields which were immediately adjacent to the to the school, which you can uh, picture in your mind, right? Uh, that mm -hmm. as soon as you get out of the town area, you were in the agriculture area, farm areas, and the school was located in the middle of a bunch of rice fields. So rice is a major uh, product. And, at that, at that. The, and the next photo is this, the rice farmers? Yeah, so this would be planting rice, the rice planting season uh, before the summer came. And these ladies uh, were out there uh, planting rice. And this is be obviously before machines and mechanism or modern farming techniques. They did this all by hand. They planted and harvested by hand. Uh, this is somewhere in the outskirts of Samchampo in, in the mountains. There are many villages in the mountains and uh, these ladies were uh, washing their clothes with their little kids, uh, babysitting their little kids in a mountain stream. So this it, it, it just, it's not that long ago. <laughs> But that's how the country has changed from then to now. As you know, it's it's a totally modern and industrialized country. Yeah, and and you you were assigned to Chunpo Boys Middle School. What was that like? Okay, so Chunpo Middle School was um, boys' middle school. There was a girls' middle school too, but in a separate school entirely. Um, it was a concrete building with no heat. And, is that uh, a photo of it right this there? This is a photo of the middle school, boys' middle school in Samchampo in 72 or 73. No heat whatsoever. They sat at rough wooden desks and in the dead of winter, that was it. They had a, a charcoal stove in the back of the room that they didn't put much charcoal in there. And I tell you, when you <laughs> went in there to teach, you had to be prepared because it was cold. 
very cold. And those little boys, those boys sat in there all day and didn't go home till you know, after sundown. Most I think we have a photo of a couple of the boys next. Yeah, these are two, two uh, middle school students I bumped into, I think when the, in conjunction with those pictures I took of the rice planting, they were helping see. their uh, parents. And how, how, oh, here, and, and how would you compare the, the school then to Hawaii schools? Uh, it's not comparable, absolutely not comparable. As you can see, yeah. um, that, that's their uniform for a winter, the black okay. uniforms. And uh, they're sitting at rough wooden desks and uh, that's how they, that was like that in the winter. It was like that in the summer, which is extremely hot. Okay, let's, let's take a look at the next photo then. And these are, the, they're just goofing off. These are their summer uniforms and uh, they're goofing off in, in class because when class was in session, they just had to sit there. And so as soon as the bell rang for the get out of class, they all went running out the door and started you know, goofing around to let well, off, all blow off steam. They all look happy, and let's take a look at the next photo, which I, I, who else is go goofing around there? Uh, <laughs> so that, is that's a, you right in the middle with a guitar and some yes, boys. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Is that right? Yes. And uh, these, these particular students were very uh, proficient in English. I don't think it had anything to do with me. It's just that they're very smart, and they paid attention in class. And picked up English very quickly. So this this group here, um, I would socialize with some from time to time. We do play ping pong. That day we went on a hike, and um, basically they got to practice their English, you know, with with me, and we got to know each other and you know, what the, what their ambitions were. So so how planning. how how generally would you characterize your experience with the Peace Corps in in Korea? How what, what was it like? So it was a, um, a very, very uh, big growing up experience. Um, you know, these conditions coming from the United States and going, going over there and then living uh, as we all did, uh, mostly in the countryside areas of the, of the Republic of Korea, it was a very difficult transition. Um, for me, the food wasn't a problem. It was uh, just, getting used to uh, a standard of living that was substantially below what we experienced here in America. And so you had to make a lot of adjustments. Uh, you had to really shrink down the size of your living space. Basically you're sleeping on a floor all the time, which actually turned out to be a blessing because in Korea the, at that time, the floors were all heated. So um, it was very, uh, you got used to that in a, in, a, in a short period of time. And, but it was like, a very, very big adjustment, a very big adjustment for most of us. Some people left, uh, it was too much. It was like overwhelming. The transition was like overwhelming. So some of them left. And um, the ones that stayed to one degree and another or another, right, decided to give it a go. And uh, at the end of the two or three year service, whatever period they, they stayed, um, they all came away with a profound appreciation for Koreans and Korean culture, and uh, grateful for having uh, been allowed to experience that, particularly at that period of time, because Korea was going through a, a, a major transition uh, in the 70s from agricultural into industrial. And, and you know, did the, what was the, did the Peace Corps make a positive contribution to Korea? Is that something that, that was good? Is that do you feel that you were part of something positive? Um, you know, absolutely. And, and uh, I think the purpose of the Peace Corps is to do, uh, to build these relationships and this cross-cultural uh, exchanges on a person-to-person -person basis. And the way the Peace Corps is run, it very much emphasizes, you know, the, the individual volunteer interacting with the host country and uh, people, ordinary people in the host country and uh, working with them, getting to know them, living with them, uh, you know, experiencing uh, all the, their culture, uh, appreciating, learning to appreciate their cultural things. And um, it's very much uh, a tremendous educational experience. The, the other year, if I could digress, there, there was, the Friends of Korea recognized all the 
Korean volunteers who had come back to America and ended up with PhDs in Korean studies and related uh, fields. And it was just amazing. And their, their whole, uh, all they could say was how grateful they were for having been you know, given the opportunity to serve in the Peace Corps in Korea because they had learned so much and basically it had, had launched them into this academic career that they would have never had had they not served in Korea. So it's, it's like a two-way street. Koreans are very generous. I, I mentioned you know, at the beginning that we still to this day uh, can constantly you know, make requests to the Friends of Korea and other organizations that have ties to the Return Peace Corps volunteers to recognize the work of the Peace Corps volunteers in Korea. And we're, we're, we're just like, this is too much. It's like overwhelming to believe all these years after we left that they would still remember us and, and remember us for making a positive contribution to their country, even though you know, it's hard to understand how you know, working in a small uh, rural uh, middle school in Korea you know, influenced very much the outcome of the 20th century for the modern Korean Republic. Do you, do you still keep in touch with any of your students or do you ever, ever hear from them or? Uh... No, I, unfortunately, I haven't. Um, I've lost touch with mo all of them, I think. I was back in Korea I, in the early, it was 2011, and we were there uh, at the invitation of the Korean government. So they, one of the things they, they uh, took me back to my school. And one of the people I met on that trip was a dentist who had gone to Samchampo Middle School. And he had very vivid mem memories of uh, me, even though I, I don't remember this kid from you know, anyone. Um, but he was talking about these funny stories about learning how to pronounce R and L, <laughs> letters R and L. And uh, he said he never forgot that. But um, he, he, this is an example of you know, how, how um, motivated these kids were he ended up going from that small school to Seoul National, which was a big jump. Uh, it's like the Harvard, as you know, the Harvard of uh, Korea. And he got into Seoul National through various rigorous examination uh, process. And then um, he went to Seoul National Dental School as well, and then elected to go back and practice dentistry in Samchampo, which was a wonderful you know, story, I thought. Now, you know, do you, do you think if more people uh, had this type of experience, it would be better for the whole country? That, that's... So without getting too, too far afield here, you know, I, I think that um, uh, the program itself, P, P score, it's not perfect. I mean, th there's a lot of problems, you know, like I, I articulated some of them in my article, um, but, to me, if you're talking about a people to people program and the way the, the, the premise of how it's set up, I don't, under, I don't know a better program that the United States has today or has had since the early 70s or 60s, whenever it, it stood up, you know, to, to foster cross-cultural and people to people understanding. I mean, the whole goal of the program is to do that. And then to come back to America and tell Americans, you know, about the people and cultures they had live with and experienced on a day-to-day -day basis and to tell Americans that they're not devils, they're not evil, you know, no matter what their religion might be, their cultural practices might be, these are just regular normal people with basically the same goals and aspirations as Americans do. They don't speak your language, they don't look like you, but if you get to know them, you will not find better friends, uh, you know, or coworkers anywhere. And I, I, to me, that's the essence of the Peace Corps program. And it's something that I think it's unfortunate if the Peace Corps one day was defunded or something like that, which you know, there's been attempts to defund the Peace Corps. To me, to so, me a youngster growing up here you know, uh, couldn't do any better than giving themselves a year or two after college to go into the Peace Corps and uh, work. And who knows, you know, you might learn something there that would trigger you getting into some kind of a field or academic endeavor because of what you learned there. Well, I mean, and is that what, what helped you decide on law or what, why did you, you came back uh, from Korea and I guess you're, I'm sure your dad was telling you, you should go into law, but- Oh, you uh, must have been there. You must have heard him tell me. <laughs> 
<laughs> but so, I mean, is, have you incorporated what you learned in the Korea in the Peace Corps into the law and life, or how has that affected you? I think, um, you know, I, I know what lawyers did. I, I observed what, you know, my dad went through and uh, his career before I went to law school. So I wasn't that I wasn't familiar with it, but after getting out of the Peace Corps, I thought that that would be a natural segue to the things uh, I had learned and come to appreciate while I was a volunteer. And, and by that, I mean, um, using this tool, the law, to be able to help ordinary people. And um, again, I, I don't wanna make what I did any bigger than it was, but um, I saw that as a segue into the law. What I had done in Korea, I could see it as a segue into the law and using the law to help people. And that pretty much, uh, people may disagree out there that I've run across in my career, but you know, my, my perspective as a lawyer my, my hope as a lawyer is that I did some good for people in, and helped them in some way uh, as a result of my work. And that, that was what I got out of Korea. Um, so we're, we're using, and we, we have about a minute left in our program. Uh, were you searching for that? And, and is that what you were looking for in your Korean heritage maybe? And, and did you find it? Is that what you found? I mean, I like what you've said. Maybe I could conclude, yeah. Yeah, I think that um, first of all, it made, it brought, a, made the, squared the circle, so to speak, because I, I now had a better understanding of Korea, its culture, and how my grandparents who came directly from Korea, what they must have gone through. I mean, understanding Korean history and learning about it while I was there, um, cultural, you know, how people think and understanding what it must have meant for them to leave Korea at that time and abandon, you know, their families, their, their, their homes, their country, uh, basically on a, in a, in a heartbeat must have been very difficult for them. And I gained a great appreciation for that. And I think I have a better understanding of my family and myself as to who I am because of that experience, definitely. There's no question about it. Well, well Bruce, uh, I want to thank you for sharing your voyage with us mm -hmm. across to Korea and what it meant personally to you as a personal journey. Uh, I appreciate that. I, I kind of, when I read your article, I, I kind of had a deep feeling about it, that there was, that there was more to it. And I appreciate you going into it and sharing with us. So aloha. Kamsaham uh, Hida, as we say. <laughs> so my nail. <laughs> I'll, talk, uh, I'll see you around, I hope. Absolutely, my friend. Thank you very much for this opportunity.